don't worry, I am not turning into some coffee connoisseur or anything like that. To be honest, usually I tend to drink tea. I just really need some caffeine right about now. I think the lockdown's starting to get to me a bit. I think the thing that's probably got to me the most about this whole lockdown, and might be the same for a lot of other photographers out there, is the not being able to go out to places to photograph them. You know, they've started to ease it a little bit in the UK now. They've said you can drive to places for unlimited exercise and if you can't work from home. So I guess I could half argue that it's work and carrying a bag full of camera gear up a mountain does constitute exercise. Although the problem there is the, the places that you want to go and photograph, everyone else is going there as well. So one thing I've been doing during this whole pandemic is made it a personal aim to post an image every single day to social media. Instagram and Facebook, pretty much. Now, most of these aren't new photos. I mean, that one is. But most of them are old ones from my archives. So when I first started doing this, it was pretty straightforward because I had like a few recent-ish photos fresh in my mind that I knew I could use. And there was a few favorites of mine that I've always kept hold of that I knew I could use. But we've been in lockdown for so long now, doing this as a daily thing. I think I'm up to 61 photos now, I think it is. 60 or 61, which might not sound like much, but obviously I want to try and make sure as well that I'm not just posting any old crap. I want them to be at least half good. All right, a quarter. Maybe a fifth. But you know, at least something semi-respectable. So it's forced me to go hunting through the deepest, darkest corners of my hard drive, trying to find old photos to see if there's any gems in there. And I found quite a few from recent years, which have kind of got in the collection that I'll trickle out as we go. But I'm trying to keep well ahead of myself because I've no idea how long this is going to go on for. So it's forced me to go further and further back through my photos. To the point I've been finding photos from six, seven, eight years ago from when I first started doing photography. Looking back through my photos has been good for two reasons, really. Number one, it's nice to reminisce, you know, look at these photos and think back and remember the time when I took the photo, a time when I could actually go outside. Uh, and number two is that it, it reminds me, it shows me how much I've changed as a photographer over the years. How my ability to use a camera, my eye for composing an image, and the way I've edited the images as well. Even though I'd already edited the images once before, that edit was like five or six years ago. And back then, I was pretty novice in learning to edit. I mean, to be fair, compared to some people now, I'm still a bloody novice. Back then, I knew nothing about tone curves or changing the HSLs of individual colours, the most I knew was you could make it a bit brighter or a bit darker, you could change the colour temperature of the whole picture, or you could change the vibrance and saturation to either make it black and white or ridiculously vivid. That was pretty much the extent of my knowledge back then. So what I've done is I've amassed a couple of images as sample, so I'm going to try and re-edit. I'm not going to re-edit them all, I'm just going to have a little bit of a play and see if there's any potential to make something a bit better from them. So, a few of these, like these first three, with the awesome watermarks, you can tell I'd only just started out in photography because I didn't know back then that nobody wants to steal a total amateur's holiday photos. So I've got them in Luminar 4, that's what I'm going to use to try and re-edit these. And I want to start with this one, because I think there's some good potential in this. So I think we'll whack in some structure there, some clarity. That's going to bring out the detail in the mountain. That's straight away. Um, punch in some contrast, bring the exposure down slightly colors are where this one's going to be at so we'll get the green hues out a little bit i think we'll try and bring that grass down slightly punch in a bit more yellow to try and bring out the clouds 
probably crop it down as well, I think. We'll try and bring the mountain into that top third. Don't need the, the dark sky over the top. It's just a bit too much. Bit of sky enhancer. Saves me the job. There's probably people flipping out, coming out in a rash now, saying, oh, well, that's not really a photo, is it? That's, that's uh, a made-up picture. You're right, it's not. It's an image. From that to that in under five minutes. Happy with that. What else we got? Uh, let's go with the tiger. So again, I was already I've already edited this once before. I was quite happy with it. Probably what I want to do is pull down the orange and yellow saturation, but then mask it. So I just want to remove the color cast from the surrounding, not the tiger itself. The tiger is obviously going to be that color. I want it to pop a little bit. So that helps the tiger stand out a little bit more. Probably I'll tweak the crop as well. I think the crop's a little bit too long. So pull that down to there maybe pull the exposure down slightly because I want to keep the detail within the tiger's face a bit more of a vignette in there not a huge difference just that little bit of helping to kind of make the tiger stand out a little bit more but it's something that I didn't know about back when I'd originally took that image had I known about it I'd have probably done this to start with I might have a bit more luck with this one well rescued the colors a bit better than I uh, than the original photo <laughs> In fact, I might change that crop entirely and go from a landscape to a portrait. Not too dramatic a change, but definitely a big improvement over what it was originally. Okay, so maybe like your really old photos might be a bit more of a struggle, but some of the more recent ones might have a bit more of a chance with. And one thing I have learned, I really didn't know my ass or my elbow when it comes to rule of thirds. sky for this and then shift the color temperatures around because that's far too blue It's a good experiment, at least, if you've got a bit of time to kill when you're stuck inside, or even if you're no longer under isolation, but you're just bored for whatever reason. Why not go back through your old photos? If for nothing else, it's good practice. But also, you might find that there's some real gems of photos hiding within those that you just never managed to fully unlock the potential of because you didn't know how to get the most out of it from editing that maybe you now do and you might find that you re-edit one and suddenly come up with some masterpiece who knows so that is my challenge to you guys give it a go find some of your old photos re-edit them up 
Leave a link down below to any re-edits you do. Show me the original. Show me your revised version. It'd be great to see what you guys come up with. I'll put an affiliate link to Luminar 4 down there as well if you want to go and check that out because they currently have it on sale. While you're down there, if you haven't already, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully I will see you in the next video.